How lovely is it to hear that buzz in a room? I said to Joe earlier, I bet you this place is going to be buzzing all morning and hearing those conversations at the tables is just superb just now. Who woke up this morning with a little sense of excitement that they were actually coming to a meeting and coming to see something with the Scottish Patient Safety Programme again? <laughs> yeah, I did too. Sky was blue, even the M8 wasn't just as busy as it was as normal, but it was lovely to kind of drive through and, and to see just, as I say, all people arriving in the car park. And it's really good to see all of you here. And a hello to everyone that's online as well, because this is our first patient safety programme hybrid event. And we've got um, a large number of people who are um, joining us online as well. And it looks like a fabulous programme that we've got in store for you all today. So thank you so much to all the organisers who've put so much time into organising this. Okay, some things that I must do today just before we get started. First of all, this, as always has been the case, the Patient Safety Programme is all about interaction. It's about connection. It's about meeting people who perhaps you've never had a conversation with before, learning what they're doing, learning with them and sharing with them. So please, today, over the course of the time that you've got here, get to know some new faces. Have a conversation with someone that you've never met before. And share what you're doing, because you never know when those connections might come in handy for the future. And we need that level of interaction as well as we go through the morning, because we've got some questions and answers that we want you to be participating um, energetically in as well. Now, Today we're going to be recording this session. There's also going to be photography and I think you've all signed consent forms, but I just wanted to, to kind of emphasise again that that's all going to be going on in the background. And again, just in housekeeping, all of you will want to kind of make use of the house ha uh, Wi-Fi here. The details are on the screen, SRU guest. And if you've got questions, you'll see the organising team dotted around the room. They're all wearing lovely yellow lanyard so they're easily identifiable and in terms of a fire alarm well, there's none expected today so if you hear the fire alarm go off my advice is find John Harden <laughs> watch for where he's running which will generally be in that direction out into the main foyer and down the stairs he's likely to be the first out of here so just follow him Self-preservation, that's a good a &E consultant there. Uh, and um, as I say, we're really, what we want you to do is encouraging you to participate in the programme, not just in the room, but actually participate with the people who couldn't make it here as well. So that means making good use of social media, please, uh, as well. We ask you, though, if you're going to be doing that, to make sure that you're putting your mobile phones on to silent as you do so. Right, OK, so... Today's event, I guess this is a brilliant opportunity to bring together all the corners of the patient safety programme at the, the one time. We're going to be concentrating on the following main aims you see on the screen here just now. First, exploring the organisation and the system-wide conditions that enable the safe delivery of care amidst increasing system pressures. pressures. Secondly, learning how the SPSP essentials of self-care are supporting improvements of safety. And the last one that's on the screen here, I think is perhaps the most important, providing a forum for leaders and teams working across all aspects of the programme to come together to share and to learn. And that's where this concept of connection, I think is particularly important. All improvement starts with the connections and the human relationships that we develop with others. And I think that we are in a very different place from the last time that we got together in 2019. We've had the experience of the last two years as we've um, responded to just an unprecedented pandemic. I wanted to pause at this stage and just to thank all of you and to say that um, I'm filled with admiration for the way that staff across the country have responded to just the enormous challenges that the pandemic brought us and continue to bring us as, as we begin our recovery as well. So um, I think we have to acknowledge that. 
And I know that things are still difficult, but that can't take us away from the real need to make sure that we're refocusing on the core aims of the programme as, 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 as we really kind of begin to re-energise our work around about the patient programme. We've adapted, we've collaborated, we've been agile in the way that we've responded. And it's that type of response that we're needing to capture and make sure that we continue over this next period. It's always important to recognise that there's more that we can do in terms of safety. And I think if we start from that place and acknowledge that that's the aim for all of us here, we can work together to make sure that that's the, what we achieve. And I'm really confident, just looking around some of the familiar faces that I see in the room, some new faces as well, but looking around these faces, I'm very confident that the people that are in this room that can help us to do that across the system. We're joined by delegates from kind of all boards across Scotland, and, and that's fantastic to see that level of enthusiasm. And from different professions as well, and I think that's always been one of the really important things about the patient safety programme. I was really fortunate to do the fellowship many years ago now in 2010, and it was probably one of the most formative experiences of my, certainly of my career, to work with different professions learning the theory behind improvement science, uh, what underpinned the patient safety programme. And the way that I did that was to work with others, to learn from others, to connect with the people who were on that programme at that time. And we used those connections really to bring about improvement that, that we never dreamed we would do so quickly at that point in time. That's what we've got to harness again and make sure that we get back to that way of working across all the different programmes of care. So, I'm delighted with the programme that we've got today. When you look through this programme, um, it's, uh, it's got, oh, where are we? Over the course of this morning, we're going to hear from some wonderful speakers, including uh, Professor Mary Dixon Woods, who's going to join us online. Um, we've also got a series of workshops this afternoon that I know many of you will have signed up to as well. And um, as I say, I think that these are really important points for learning. On your tables, you see some QR codes. And in the past, you recall that when you came to one of these events, you got one of these lovely little tote bags filled with um, papers and goodies and that you took away and they kind of gathered dust for a little while after um, you got home until you threw them away. But this is a way where we can not only um, provide you with stuff in a very safe way, but all that information is then easily accessible. Presentations, speakers' biographies, delegate lists are all there. And really importantly, there's also uh, an evaluation that we want you to complete at the end of this as well. Thanks very much, Gregor. And uh, it, it does seem to have gone in a flash, uh, 2016 being Chief Exec to today, 2022. And what's going even quicker, it seems, is that tomorrow will be 30 years for me in the National Health Service. And uh, many of the things that we're grappling with today, I have to say, were still around when I started in my career, uh, much younger, I looked much younger in 1992. So um, I think, uh, Mary's posed a number of questions for us. I, I wouldn't like to think about raining on a parade, but actually putting a mirror up to us uh, as, as, a, as a collective and a, as a system, I think, has been absolutely important and really, really timely. So a few thoughts in, in respect of uh, the world that we're now in. And to go back to uh, Don Berwick in 2013, and this is a comment that he made on the back of Mid-Staffordshire. And it is about um, detecting smoke alerts in the system. And what I think uh, Mary described very well is that balance between structure, process and outcome. And what is also important in that regard is thinking particularly about those bits within the structure which are consistent and similar, but where also there are smoke alerts and signals about interpersonal relationships, about culture, behaviour. What's it like to work around here? as an organisation. And that got to the heart of uh, the challenges in Mid-Staffordshire, uh, that overwhelming focus on the money, the overwhelming focus on the need to achieve Foundation Trust status over safety and all the concerns that are raised, and especially by junior doctors. 
So it's timely in respect to what Mary said in putting the mirror up to us in Scotland about how we respond to safety going forward. And we've done tremendous things uh, over the past uh, dozen years in respect to safety. We've done really remarkable things uh, as a country and all down to the sheer will, the drive, the enthusiasm, the commitment, the energy of everyone in this room and indeed beyond. And there are four things, though, I think we need to do in the future in terms of taking forward safety. And it is about building on all the successes, whether it's sepsis, whether it's cardiac arrest, whether it's ventilator-associated pneumonia, all really important things. But we now need to go to the next stage and think about safety in the system and having perhaps a different view of what we need to do to build on that. So the first thing I want to say is that um, a connected system of safety, and Gregor said um, earlier on today that he said that all improvement starts with a connection, and indeed it does. We have a connected system in Scotland. We need to remember that. The size and the scale of what we have in Scotland is uh, a region in uh, England, such as uh, the northwest of England, and we need to really play to strategic advantages of that in terms of our size, our scale, relationships, geography, everything. In, in doing that. But we also need, as Mary said, to get better at knowing when things are going wrong. And crucially in all of that, we need to start to think about what are the alerts, what are the signals in the system, and how do we have a much greater and un un uninterrupted line of sight between the boardroom and all the way to the front line in terms of safety. So that golden thread of understanding about how good is care around here, how safe is it, is absolutely critical. And we need to have a more proactive identification of systems at risk. So we already know where in Scotland where there are systems that are struggling. They're struggling in terms of uh, capacity. They're struggling in terms of leadership. They're struggling in terms of the infrastructure to do what needs to be done. But they know what good care looks like. And they need our support. So the first thing to say is we need a more connected system for safety going forward. The second thing is that we need to bring together our knowledge and intelligence of what we know. So Mary referred to the soft intelligence, the soft intelligence that is difficult to share because of psychological safety, but we know many of the things about leadership, we know things about culture, we know things about behaviours within the system as it is at the moment. And we do know from our work in terms of excellence in care, and Joe referred to excellence in care but also adverse events, how that comes together with all the other pieces of data that we know, whether it's from the Scottish Patient Safety Programme and beyond. So we need to have much more of a focal point for safety in Scotland. So we've got a focal point for considering performance in terms of A&E, the front door, four hours, as we know. But we need to create a similar focal point for safety to act as, Mary said, the broker, to act as that facilitator, that enabler, to think about how we improve, not in a punitive top-down sense, but how do we convene to consider safety in the system. And we need to embed everything from what we described in terms of that curiosity, asking the questions, and asking the questions even it might elicit the different answer from what you expect. And I think that's about courage. It is about what Joe described to you as well, not just courage, but collaboration. And I think that's absolutely essential as well. So we need to create a new focal point for safety and to consider how we do it for the country and the size and the scale that we have here in Scotland. But we also need some shock absorbers at the moment, and none more than now in the context of the pressures on the system. Uh, we need to create that climate of well-being. We need to create that climate of psychological safety. And we need to act responsibly and proactively in what we do. And it would be far, far too easy to uh, inject another bit of confusion into a system already overloaded about what we're going to do here. So we need to respect the points that have been made. This is... Um, I have to say, and I'll put it on the record in terms of my 30 years in the health service, this is the most extreme time that we've been in. So we need something that is going to help people working in the service, people supporting the service to do better, to help them to do the right thing. So we need to create the series of shock absorbers which will help people to do that right thing each and every time. And what Joe referred to is absolutely crucial. We need that constancy of purpose. Because it was just that constancy of purpose in 2008 that drove forward the Scottish Patient Safety Programme. We need that same constancy of purpose in the times that we're in today 
to take forward safety in the system. And we need to focus on the blind spots. Those things are out of sight and out of mind. So we can measure many aspects of the acute hospital system, but too many of our services, too much of the care that we provide is beyond measurement, is beyond data, and we need to rectify that. But it isn't just about data and measurement, it is about ensuring an inclusive way of involving those services in the better design of care. So we need to, in building a, more, a greater focal point, a more connected system, uh, a system of shock absorbers, we need to identify where these blind spots are. We know those services that don't feature as prominently on board agendas. We know those services that don't attract the level of investment that other services do. And we need to have a similar approach to those services to ensure sure they have um, similar investment, similar support, and ultimately a safer care. So I would really make a, a strong plea that we do think about the quality of care beyond the hospital and the walls of it. And all the more important in the context of the building of a national care service that we have a connected system, a connected system of health and social care for the future. So I promised I was going to get through this fairly quickly. And, um, uh, but I think the, the, the key messages I'd like to get over is to emphasise the point again about um, that Joe said at the very start of this, safety is not done. And it's not done yet. We need that constancy of purpose. We need that to build that connected system. We need a system that values every part of it in ensuring safety is focused. And I also think it's important that we do reflect very much on um, the point that uh, Mary referred to, that we can't keep adding everything in to an already busy system. So in that constancy of purpose, that clarity of purpose, we do need to think what's the right thing to do. And I think particularly in Healthcare Improvement Scotland, it's a critical role as myself as the Chief Executive, and I do have this discussion every executive team meeting, we've got a lot to do and what we're going to do less of. But we do also have a role in helping to broker and advocate for change and improvement. And that does require us thinking quite radically, quite boldly about what is the right thing to do to make care here in Scotland safer. So thank you. Thank you very much for listening. And, uh, Enjoy the rest of the day, a fantastic moment in terms of safety, to recognise uh, all the efforts of everybody involved in it, and I'm immensely proud and privileged to lead an organisation like HIS. Thank you. Thank you. Morning everybody and don't panic, I'm not going to sing or dance. Thanks very much Gregor for that. I would like to um, echo both Ms Todd and Gregor's thanks to everybody in this room today, today for being able to join us and taking the time out to, to do that. For anybody who doesn't know me, I'm Jo Matthews, I'm the head of the Scottish Patient Safety Programme. Today marks an important moment and a milestone in our recovery through the pandemic. And for many people, it's about coming back together today around that common purpose and shared goal, improving the safety of care for all. As a national team, we've thought long and hard about holding today's session. We heard and we completely understand how challenging services, teams and people are facing just now in these challenging times. But what we also heard when we checked in with people, that this work was of meaning and of value, not just improving the safety of care, but also to the people who are at the heart of that change, people like you and your teams, coming together to focus on something that can have a long lasting positive impact, can bring purpose and joy to your work at a time when we know in the midst of what is happening can feel utterly overwhelming. We also recognise today that there are many people joining us who have been part of this journey right from the outset. But there's also many new faces in the room. And as a whole team, we would want to extend a warm welcome to everybody. Four years ago, literally to this day, I stood at this lectern and reflected on the courage, collaboration and commitment of you and your teams in the relentless pursuit of safety, 
Little did I know that actually a year later, that courage, commitment and collaboration would be brought into sharp focus with the COVID pandemic. Now, we know that the pandemic brought about significant challenges for health and social care services. And we also recognise that it also surfaced a range of new safety issues, which we're now focusing on. But also through that time, we recognise that the context completely changed. And the work that we're doing now within SPSP has to reflect that new context that we're operating within. Not only has it had an impact on the people delivering care, but also those receiving care. And we recognise that harm continues to happen within the system. And SPSP has an important role to play, as has been reflected already this morning, and how we not only support you in being able to deliver that safe care, but also ensuring we bring about that reliability um, and reduction of harm right across services. And that's where the role of SPSP plays such an important place. It's about bringing people together, starting to think about actually what, where are those safety issues, and applying quality improvement methodology to those safety issues that have been identified by the system and are owned by the system. Capturing and monitoring progress and being able to share that progress amongst teams right across the country. And through that, being able to connect people to be able to support their learning. The Health Foundation last Friday published an evaluation and key learning from a partnership between Virginia Mason and five NHS trusts in England, who were trying to build continuous improvement cultures across their organisations. The report identified recommendations for both local system leaders alongside national policymakers on how to lead and support effective improvement. The evaluation found a strong culture of peer learning and knowledge was critical as a critical enable of organisational wide improvement, but it also highlighted that visible and sustained commitment to improvement programmes from leaders was essential to ensuring that that improvement work gained traction, not just within the original test teams, but right across their organisation. And lastly, the report described how vital it was for those improvement priorities to be aligned with organisational and national objectives ensuring that there was a shared approach and shared goals to those improvement areas of focus. Does that sound familiar to anybody? So those factors were a critical part of the development of the newest element of the Scottish Patient Safety Programme, the foundation in which all of our safety work now rests, the essentials of safe care. Co-designed, produced and owned by health and care services across Scotland, who came together around that common goal and shared purpose and aligned to local and national priorities that built on the latest evidence but were also grounded in practical help. And this is what that health and care service described what good would look like for Scotland. For those learning about the essentials today for the very first time, you can access the information within your virtual delegate bag. There is a, a link to the website that will take you to an interactive driver diagram. Within that driver diagram, there are four primary drivers that were identified as the four key essentials to the delivery of safe care. And what rests behind each of those secondaries is the rationale as to why this is so important, but also what is already expected of people what is the standards and guidance that is already available for teams in Scotland to be applying? Alongside that, there is a range of resources and tools, including a readiness assessment for you to help you and your team think about, are we at a point where we can actually make this change? A prioritisation tool to actually identify where do you want to focus first? And then a range of resources, including a measurement plan to track how you're progressing. As you'll see from this afternoon's breakout sessions, the essentials of safe care are being embedded within each of the SPSP programmes and improvement to, um, activity. And this is to enable us to have a systematic approach to doing that. 
However, to embed these conditions at an organisation and system-wide level will require a constancy of purpose, a strategic and operational prioritisation, supported by a culture of continuous improvement with structures and processes in place at all levels to support people. We recognise that this isn't a static set of essentials and will continue to be a work in progress. It's almost like a TBC, we're going to keep changing and evolving this. But with your feedback and your learning about how you're applying these and about new areas that you're identifying, we will continue to adapt these to what are the system's needs. And that's where SPSP can create the conditions in, with your knowledge and experience and learning in order that we can facilitate and accelerate that improvement and change. And that can be shared right across Scotland and across health and care. Today is but one example of how we do this alongside our programme specific networks, our members areas, our national measurement and our case studies. And again, you can access all of this within those web links. At lunch today, you can connect with each of the SPSP programmes through the market stalls and the wider elements of his. And all of the work of SPSP is not done in isolation. It rests within a body of other improvement offers and support. And particularly within his, that includes excellence in care and adverse events. And bringing all those elements of the jigsaw together remains and continues to be a priority um, for the Scottish Patient Safety Programme. So we all come here today with a circle of control in which we can make change happen. A circle in which we can influence others to make change happen. And that circle round about it, which at this moment in time, I'm just going to call noise not something that we can do a great deal about. So I ask that throughout the course of today, you take a moment to think about what can I take from today back to my organisation, to my service or to my team that's within my gift to change and how am I going to do it? And what do I need to get the help of others to make happen? And how am I going to get their support? Because just imagine if we all do that. Think about the impact our collective courage, collaboration and commitment to improving the safety of care for all can achieve. Thank you. Good morning, friends. Good morning, colleagues. Now, more than ever, where do you start at an event like this, other than by thanking everyone? First of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak at today's national event. I want to thank Healthcare Improvement Scotland for their work in organising the day-to-day. -day. I don't underestimate for a second the work that goes into gathering people together, both virtually and in the room, and supporting as all to talk and listen to each other. It's wonderful to have such a strong turnout, to see so many people from across the health and social care sector in Scotland gathered back together here in the room to discuss patient safety. I do think it's valuable to have us here in person as well as online. We sometimes get perspectives in person that it's hard to pick up when we're online that can make such a difference to our collaboration. But I also know from my own experience living outside the central belt, quite far outside the central belt, as you can probably tell from my accent, it opens the door for so many more people to attend, making these events accessible online. Patient safety is a focus in every part of our system, in every corner of our country, and being able to open virtual doors to everyone with an interest today is really important. So thank you to my colleague, our Chief Medical Officer, Gregor Smith, both for his lovely introduction and for his leadership during the last two years. And goodness me, he's still cheerful despite all the challenges. <laughs> Finally, most importantly of all, 
I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you in the room for the work that you have done and continue to do to make healthcare in Scotland safer. The ongoing success of the Scottish Patient Safety Programme is testament to your hard work and the work of staff across the country to improve the care for some of those people who are most at risk. Never has that been more important or more apparent than now. You and other committed professionals that you work with every single day have kept a focus on patient safety during some of the most difficult times of our lives. You've made a life-saving difference and that is the most important thank you of all for me today. Thank you. In my role as Minister for Public Health, Women's Health and Sport, I recognise the paramount importance of patient safety. It's something I know well, as I said, back from my own years as a pharmacist. How much people rely on you to keep them safe and what that trust means. When people need to access any part of the healthcare system in Scotland, they have to have confidence that they'll receive treatment that's effective, person-centred and safe. The Scottish Patient Safety Programme has been vital to achieving this ever since it first started. When we launched in 2008, this was the first programme of its kind anywhere in the world. So we are world leading in Scotland. Over the last 14 years, it's delivered reductions in mortality in areas ranging from cardiac arrest to sepsis. It's been an exemplar to countries all over the world. And we've been happy to share our learning to do our bit to help to improve patient safety elsewhere too. But the Scottish Patient Safety Programme continues to be vital, probably more vital than it ever has been before. And while the Patient Safety Programme may have been paused during the COVID-19 pandemic, patient safety itself certainly wasn't. Your focus on patient safety has been crucial over the last two and a half years in providing the environment and the conditions that enabled NHS Scotland to be flexible, to adapt quickly to the greatest challenge our healthcare system has ever faced. The focus that we all place on patient safety didn't stop during the pandemic and now as we emerge from that intense couple of years and face a host of different challenges, Revitalising the programme and our concentration on patient safety more broadly is absolutely critical. You'll be hearing a full update on the Scottish Patient Safety Programme from Joanne Matthews very shortly, but from a personal point of view, I'm delighted that SPSP has been remobilised. Its focus on delivering safe care is even more pressing at a time when our NHS is treating more people with more complex needs as we seek to recover from the pandemic. <clears throat> we want to make sure that your voice is heard in that and that we work together to reflect your experience and priorities so that we can be more vigilant than ever before. Throughout the last two and a half years, NHS staff have gone above and beyond to continue to provide safe and effective treatment for those in their care despite the challenges the virus posed. Now, I know there will have been very many valuable insights that you've all learned from this experience and that you'll share with each other today. The essentials of safe care, person-centred systems and behaviours with safe communication within and between teams, safe and consistent clinical care processes with leadership to promote a culture of safety for all and the aim to enable the delivery of safe care for every person within the system, every time. By bringing together these key facets, the basic foundations are created to support the further work on safety. The future of the Scottish Patient Safety Programme is incredibly exciting. No doubt it will be the subject of many valuable and interesting conversations throughout today's event. 
but we know there's still more to do to continue to improve safety. And one of the aims of today's event is to explore the organisational and system-wide conditions that enable the safe delivery of care amidst increasing system pressures. In order for our healthcare system to be as safe as possible, we need to be able to identify where the concerns of individual patients might point to a wider pattern. For too long, patients have sometimes found it too hard to be heard when they have concerns about the safety of their care. And Baroness Cumberledge's Independent Medicines and Medical Devices Safety Review clearly told us there have been times where individual concerns, if they had been listened to, um, they've been considered as one-off complaints rather than being indicative of wider safety issues. And that's why it's so welcome that the focus of this event is system-wide conditions for safe care. And it's also why the Scottish Government has committed in the programme for government to create a patient safety commissioner. The commissioner will listen to patients' experiences, ensure that they're heard across the healthcare system, drive positive change and make health care safer for us all. Practically, that will mean listening to patients' concerns about safety issues, identifying trends and patterns in patient reporting, promoting the views of the patient at national level. People sharing their experiences will be key to making this work and improving the system for us all. The Commissioner needs to hear from people about where their care could have been better. The Commissioner will also have an important convening role in bringing organisations together to take action on patients' concerns. They'll work with existing organisations and healthcare professionals to promote improvement and complement the, final work, the vital work being led through the SPSP programme, rather than duplicating patient safety work and the systems that are already there. Now, I'm sorry that I'm not able to stay for the full day. There is a great buzz in the room and it would be lovely to stay longer. But seeing so many people from across the health and social care sector back together, sharing their ideas and experiences, I'm excited about what the future of patient safety in Scotland holds. Earlier in my remarks, I spoke about the challenges of the last two years and the ongoing recovery from COVID-19 pandemic. Now is the time to share and integrate our learning from that period, to build on the valuable work you've all done since the launch of the Scottish Patient Safety Programme in 2008, and to continue to work together across the healthcare system to make care safer for everyone. I wish you all very well for the rest of the event and the many interesting discussions to come. Thank you. Thank you.